Hi, everybody. Welcome to Bill and Toby's crypto market podcast focusing on tarot card readings for major events. Toby, hi. Welcome to the show. It's nice to see you again. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's always a good time. Three questions we have today. What, what impact will the lunar eclipse have? And then we're going to do the impact of the Federal Reserve's interest rate hike and press conference, followed by what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. Okay, start with the first question. Oh. Okay, so the impact in financial markets of the lunar eclipse in Scorpio on May 5th. Okay, so you're working with a shuffle deck, tarot cards. You're going to split them into three, or I will. And I pick this card. Okay, so we have the Ten of Cups. Um, this is a card of bounty. Um, so things are actually going to be pretty good. And it's a lunar eclipse in Scorpio. Scorpio always has that energy of um, the the darkness and, and the depth and everything. So you can expect things to come to surface, but it, it looks like everything's going to go really well. Hey, Scorpio's dark. I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm big. I'm Scorpio. Dark. Deals with the underworld. <laughs> All right. So we, we have a level of prosperity with that, right? Yeah. This is a very prosperous card. And, um, and especially cups deal a lot with emotions, right? right. So uh, there's actually a feeling of, of bounteousness uh, around this card. You can see he's feeling very satisfied with himself. So, um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be like there's going to be a lot of restrictions around this lunar eclipse. Interesting. And now you didn't ask me specifically. Did you ask specifically about the market? That was going to be fun. Well, I was really interested if people are feeling prosperous, what that might mean for something like crypto, given this card. Oh, okay. Okay. No, well, crypto's in an uptrend, so maybe you can, you know, try to pull another card. Can you pull another card? Uh, you know, do like a five card reading on this eclipse, maybe? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> no. All right. We're not doing no, that. No, but we're going to do another card. <laughs> so uh, we got the Emperor card. Okay. Excellent card for stability. Um, it has an energy of making things feel very solid, um, and uh, it's really good for anything like markets or uh, laws or anything like that. This there's a sense of of um, stability and doing the right thing. the The emperor is a uh, it, even though it's a masculine card, is it's a very nurturing card. It's more like the caretaker sort of mentality somebody is watching out for you and has your best interests at heart so it's a good card so satoshi nakamoto and bitcoin watching over us and prosperity for people in crypto i mean at a minimum people won't get wrecked at least according to this card so yeah yeah and again that we're dealing with short-term energies you know so this is probably a good reading for the next week or so all right good so crypto crypto hopefully in the green now let's talk about you know, the Fed's interest rate decision. Okay, I'm going to do a quick shuffle. All right, I'm going to reshuffle. So I know you watched that really boring conference. Right, that was your first press conference, Toby. Watched Jerome Powell. and Like I, three minutes. I think it's super boring. It's <laughs> safe to say it was the cure for insomnia. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it was. I believe your comment was he, he doesn't even know what he's doing or talking about. He, not Not in a negative way, but. Well, the, the the image that came to me is um, children playing on a beach in the sand, you know, and you know how you build, at least I did when I was a kid, went to the ocean and you build like these trenches and you try to get the water to move a certain way, but the ocean just keeps coming in and over time it it erodes everything that you're doing. So we're, it, to me, energetically, it felt like we're setting up these little mini you know, movements, much like you do make a moat around a sand castle or something for protection. But eventually, all of our actions are only temporary and that, you know, the energy of the universe always wins. And yet, the ocean always takes over the sand castle. 
So Mr. Mr. Market has the final say, the forces of nature. Yeah. The big question is, you know, like, has the Fed lost control? Uh, okay, so what is the particular question? Yeah, that's a yes or no question. That's a yes or no question. We can't do that. Yeah. So we're just going to talk about the impact of not only the Fed's decision to raise interest rates one more time, but, you know, you're reading just off his level of confidence of, you know, the, the, the reading, the impact of this on markets. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Okay, so. Okay, again, from a shuffled deck. <laughs> We're going to pull from the middle. Here we go. Oh, we got the king of pentacles. You can't get a better card for money. I mean, the pentacles deal with money and physical reality and the body. So the, the king of um, pentacles... Is also very structured, so it's the ultimate expression of of this um, earth element. So it's very solid, very structured. Um, so not the not the end of the world, not the end of the world just quite yet. A lot of people are like doom and gloom. This might su suggest, I don't know, near term stability or even that, positive that, sentiment. Yeah, that's what I would say. I, I would say that there's probably going to be a shift to the energy. Um, to where, at least temporarily, again, we're talking about a short-term movement of energy here over the next couple of weeks, is that things may start to feel a little more stable for people. It's a very stable card. So markets in general will probably, for most people, you know, not everybody pays as much attention to. The as I do? So it's, okay, no, especially not me. A snooze fest. <laughs> right, all right. Well, it, it's a snooze fest unless it's moving up and you... And no, it's no. very, that's very exciting. What you're doing is, what you're doing is really super important. But, but what I'm saying is this is a reading of the overall general sentiment. And I think, um, people aren't quite freaked out yet. Okay. It was this, would you like another card? I, I would. So people aren't freaking out, but the question is, you know, let, let's, let's check everyone's P and L. Another really good card. Okay. This is the victory card. Um, so it shows success. So maybe... You know, this latest move is going to work out at least in the way that they want or that um, people in general want. And uh, yeah, so, so far we're not seeing a lot of negative consequences to this first lunar eclipse, at least in this moment, what's going on right at this time. So things may be okay for crypto investors and maybe even for stock market guys too, right? A lot of people think... A lot of people don't always give the Fed at least some credit. I mean, I know that they are the little boy with the fingers in the dike. Right. That's the faith. Right. But what they're, what they're doing may actually work in terms of stopping inflation, right? Yeah. May actually stop inflation. And that, that expectation could be healthy for markets. This is, of course, if they don't break anything. Yes. And I know you've been saying that a lot, you know, about... Uh, in a way, they I guess they do want to break something. They do want to break the inflation cycle. They do want people to feel um, calm and secure. And it looks like the energy is moving that way. So um, I, I can't speak for markets in particular. I just read energy. And I'm reading energy of a large group of, of people at this moment. And it, it appears that people are going to sort of feel okay and safe for now. Well, it could be really interesting for markets if people feel safe from inflation, right? It's like, you know. Fear of inflation means fear of the Fed. Mm -hmm. Less fear about inflation, less fear about the Fed. That can have positive market implications, you know, or at least stabilizing. Now, speaking of stability, the Russians versus the Ukrainians. That's a big thing. I, I, I don't watch the news. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's, right, well, that's good. We don't, uh, we don't want you to watch the news. We want you to... To, to give us the reading straight, that's that's why this is so cool. Yeah, right. This is so cool, right? I'm just reading the energy of the moment. So, the what's happening with the war in rec the Ukraine? And I'm gonna go ahead and pull three cards on this one for you. Okay, thank you. Let's do this. And the three cards represent the past, the present, and the future. So we'll draw the past first. Oh, so uh, this is the financial legacy card, the, the Ten of Coins. So in the case of a war, somebody's making a lot of money off of this. 
<laughs> so um yeah m- money it, money is definitely the the at the root of of everything that's going on there and i, I think we always kind of know that right okay. i mean anybody who doesn't think that uh, wars are primarily caused for financial reasons and the rest is just an excuse i mean there's a whole bunch of wars always going on in africa but we got no money financial interest there so nobody does anything right so so money is the pot okay. that's that's P- possibly wheat and oil right commodities lots of different forms of money let's keep that absolutely. one in mind absolutely i mean we're not just talking about coinage but yes it, there there's uh there's definitely some movement around money and and who's making money off of this this is inherently important to know um but things are going to be shifting so now we have the night of um, panic was and this is slow movement and a message around that money so something is shifting and in that the the energy is uh moving not not bad and not very quickly but a but a pivot in a way th- it, this would indicate a pivot yes it, it, we we had been falling right and then we turned around recently on news i will tell you Okay. Right. And then gold actually started to take off yeah. uh, as well. Right. So we're always talking about gold and Bitcoin. So, you know, if if money is the issue, if a war has a money issue and there's about to be a shift, yes. right? Okay. That, again, could be in commodities. It could also be in Bitcoin, but maybe commodities, right? So maybe it's a hot summer for certain areas of the market maybe we can get more information off the third call well, let's see yeah this is the future so let this is where we're showing oh the queen of swords so a decision will be made so swords always represent um mental work it's an air fine and the the queen makes decisions based on logical information but she much more comes from her heart so i would see some decisions coming about of route humanitarian causes and things like that um so we've got and you mentioned commodities maybe there's something going on there with feeding people i don't know but maybe they they, they get a, they get a corridor either open or closed like either the wheat corridor opens or the wheat corridor closes Right, you know the market. <laughs> right, right, right. I just know energy. Yeah. All right, so it's, so it's, it's, a, a decision, but but it's but it's coming from a place of um, uh, of love, really. Or you know, it, it's not um, rigid and rule bound. But but there will be a decision coming up that's going to affect people, and and it will be seen as a humanitarian. Oh, yeah. So that could actually mean peace too. Potentially, yes. Right. And that is, if the, wheat goes high enough, or if there's a, if there's enough disturbance, it could then trigger actual peace. Could be. I mean, this is a. This would be a good sign of of a of a peace treaty, or at least um, some sort of a halt in the war. Uh, it's it's really the energy is around, you know, uh, wanting to help people is the the energy around. It. So how that manifests, it could come out in a lot. This would be interesting. That would be that would be lovely. That would be. All right, so I'm going to put you on the spot here. Since we talked, do I need to talk Russia and Ukraine? Yeah. Can we can we do China and Taiwan? Can we do general geopolitical? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. Let me shuffle it up and don't tell me what's going. Oh, I, I will tell you. I live in my own little peaceful garden. Of yes. Well, that's that's exactly that's exactly why we love it. With the reality. But this is after why we love having you because we we're mixing the, we're mixing the financial with the mystical. Yes, right. And Toby does not allow me to look at the camera, even though I just cheated there. It says I have to pay attention. I look at the camera. And look at the camera. No, I'm not looking at the camera. If you're talking to them, you look at the camera. No, I'm not talking. I'm talking. <laughs> they're watching me talk to you. Okay, good. So chi- China and Taiwan. Okay, so we're shuffling the random tarot card deck for anybody who's. Coming in late. This is my version of bringing astrology and GAN style analysis to markets and geopolitics. Okay, so the question is. Okay, China and Taiwan. What's next? Okay, we'll do three cards with this one. Okay. So this 
card represents the best. Wow, we got the Knight of Pentacles again. So, it's a message about money and, and education in money. And um, so, oh, basically, in the past, there's maybe been the um, difference of opinion or, around it, but but something is happening with the financial of of the countries that's causing this to happen again. Okay, so the, the along the world, semiconductor chips are made in Taiwan. Oh, this looks like it could be semi. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's holding a semiconductor chip, right? He's oh, you know, there's there's the semiconductor chips, and then there's also this idea that China is about to start embracing Bitcoin by opening up trading in Hong Kong. So we don't know what that means yet, but well, now it money thing. money money could be involved with China and Taiwan. Yeah, let's get another cards. Yeah. Wow, this is so funny. Yeah, we got the Queen of Hearts took the hammer of it by Cam. I, again, uh, the, um, as you say, perhaps a move towards peace. Um, perhaps people aren't feeling as threatened as maybe we want to think they are. I mean, there's a, always a lot of talk of stuff in the, in the media, but it looks like things will probably be resolved in a way that benefits humanity. Okay. And then the future is, oh, something brand new growing out of that's this is the Bitcoin that you're talking. About. That's right. Yeah, the, the Ace of Wands is a very good sign for new energy, new things coming up, a new idea. It's very exciting. There's a lot of movement around it, and so people are going to be very, very excited about it. So, so rather than push the United States on a war, maybe China pushes people into Bitcoin, causing Bitcoin to rise and perhaps embarrass the U.S. government because. If everybody wants Bitcoin and not the dollar, crypto can be this very radiant messaging system. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely, it doesn't look like there's going to be um, a war. Maybe there's just a lot of saber rattle going on with all of this. The, the cards are saying people are going to be okay and, and there's a new energy moving in. So we'll look for that in the next few weeks. New energy moving in, shifting the balance of power, and uh, I see what happened. All right, so, you know, the Fed, not as bad as you think, right? Inflation may actually get under control, which could be very constructive for financial assets because, you know, there's a lot of gloom and doom on CNBC today, which is the financial snooze network we were watching earlier, yeah. right? And then a lot of people expect the geopolitical conflict a lot of people expect the hot war. Okay, maybe that doesn't happen, at least not now. Is that, that kind of your sense? It's, it's what the, the cards are, are saying, that things aren't quite as bad as maybe people want. And one of the reasons I don't watch news is because they hyper-inflate everything to get viewers in. And, uh, and so I think there's always a lot of that going on in the news media they want to see problems where there may not they're, they're always talking about potentialities but not uh, i mean the, right or is it you right out of disaster disaster news yeah everything right disaster cells so they want to keep you anxious and stressed because it's a good way to control you if, if you're not making rational decisions in maryland uh, when you're constantly under stress and, and pressured into a state of fear not a good place to to be so the cards are saying yeah maybe don't worry so much <laughs> right that's it for this week folks we'll see you next time <laughs>